Orbe is part of the original three summoners in Summoner's War Chronicles. She is a mage that offers damage, utility, through all five of her abilities and all five of her elements. She's a really good summoner, and she's probably one of the best in the game, if not the best in the game. In this guide, I will go through everything you need to know as an Orbea player. And if you like this guide, please make sure that you not only subscribe to the channel for more updates like this. I'll be doing a Kina, a Cleave, and a Saleta guide after this. Saleta was Saleta was not the most voted. Orbia was the most voted. So I'm doing an Orbia guide right now, and I will get through the rest as time goes on. But if you like the video, make sure again to subscribe to the channel for future guides like this. Also, make sure to like the video, comment below any type of questions you may have as an Orbia player, and let's get into the video. All right, so when we're first talking about Orbia, let's talk about her skills. On her S3 on Fire Staff, it applies four times in an area, and it also stuns with a certain chance as well as burn it's really good really really good it's a really good fourth skill second skill strips one buff and also applies burn first skill hits three times as you can see it knocks back as well but the main thing is that they're already burned and it increases the burn chance which is also really really good so when i'm using fire staff orbia i do s2 into s3 into s1 it's a really good order and something i would recommend if you're using fire if you're using fire orbia they also changed her other skills where she has the Meteor Strike now. And the Meteor Strike has a chance of burn and also stun. I don't really recommend it too much. I, I, I kind of like the, the first one, not the second one. It's okay. It's cool. It's not for, it's you know, it stuns, which is also pretty nice. But personally, I like the I like the first skill a lot better. I like the first one a lot better. And then on, uh, on her other S2, she has the Firewall, which removes invincibility, which is not bad. It's, it's I feel like this is more of a PV, uh, P type of skill because there's not many times you're dealing with invincibility in PVE. But if you ever find a boss that has PVE and it's kind of annoying you, there you go. You have the Firewall. Um, you have the Firewall, which is actually not that bad. It's, it's, it's not bad, but it's not. It's not, And also applies defense down, which is also pretty cool. But uh, for the most part, you're going to be on these two skills. It's like I said, S2, S3, it's S1. Uh, the main place you're going to be using Fire Orbia is pretty much like tear glands uh tear glands is ideally the best place to use it because if you didn't know if the boss is a dot effect it doesn't have damage taken down which you want to get rid of that's sh that shit's really freaking annoying um for any other character but for orbia it's really easy this is why orbia is arguably the best early game unit because of the fact that she starts your progression a lot faster because the, the faster you get the tear glands the faster you start progressing and because orbia literally burns on every single skill and she's fire you'll get the damage a lot easier which means you'll be able to do tear glands a lot quicker and a lot faster um so that's fire skill now we will go to We'll go to water, which is personally one of my favorites. I actually like water a lot. And we'll go to her original S1, not her second, but the original S1 uh, shoots a shoots a ice, the little fire spear, the little ice spears instead of fire spears. And as you can see, it knocks back and also has a chance to freeze. The second skill um, extends CC effects, which is pretty much freeze, and it also uh, applies mana cost up to the enemy summoner, which is pretty good. Like I said, in PVE, my bad, PVP. This is really really good. Um, S3 does a four time effect and it also applies frostbite which again is another uh it's another dot effect but fire is a lot better as you as you can see because of the fact it applies on every single skill so uh personally what is my favorite for this skill right here because this skill is amazing when you are doing um naraka naraka is it's so so good especially hero naraka really really good i suggest if you're doing hero naraka and you want to complete that as fast as possible unlock this skill it is so so good so um i like it a lot and it's also pretty good in pvp where you're fighting against cleaves and cleaves are jumping on you you can say get the Fuck off me and, and you know run this skill. I, I like it a lot. I do like water staff. It's a long. It's not super ideal to be honest with you. Um, you won't use it too much, but um, it does have scenarios where it's actually really really good. Too bad it was it was a little bit nerfed because of the fact that this skill was applying. Uh, I believe it was called. I think they were saying it caused a meta down to monsters as well, which it shouldn't have done. But um, it did get nerfed a bit. But it's overall very usable if you're in PvP. You're fighting Cleaves, and a lot of Cleaves like to really you know 
dunk on Orbeus. So this helps you a lot. So you can just press this skill and pretty much take it the fuck off me. So now we have Winstab, which is probably the most used uh, staff for Orbi, especially in PvE. The reason why is because its just overall utility is amazing. So we have S3, which applies, which hits four times and applies damage taken up, aka Brand. And it only applies damage taken up if, it ha if the enemy has a certain level of defense down, which is three. So in order for you to get the defense down, they have to have a level three or, or more, and it'll apply Brand. Which is good because that's what her S2 does. Her S2 hits four times and every hit has a chance to apply defense down. So you can easily defense break a target with the S2, then apply S3 and it'll get brand. Um, Orbia also has two S1 abilities. The alternate S1 applies electric shock and it, and it penetrates defense on a target, which is really good, honestly. And then we have uh, the first skill on uh the first skill which is also really good because this ignores damage uh this ignores the uh death prevention so if a person so if a boss or anybody has and not invincibility well, i think it is invincibility but mainly endure it goes straight through endure and kills the target so it's really good for sherlocky you know the guy with the the the, the little electric the electric guy and all that, that guy's annoying but this goes straight through that and you don't have to worry about it so for pve uh the ideal turn order is to obviously do s2 so you can defense break the target s3 if they have uh, level three or above so that way you can apply the brand then s1 to e on either the attack down or the electric shock so if you're having trouble with like some probability i would suggest you know sticking to the the lightning wind bolts so that way you can apply attack down um but once you get later into the game i would suggest using this skill because not only does it apply electric shock but it also penetrates the defense which is really really good uh, we have Light Staff. Light Staff is probably the most used in PvP. It's really, really good. Not too much used in PvE. There's not too much places you would actually use this, but it's pretty good in PvE, but it, it's exceptionally good in PvP. The reason why is because we have the S3, which uh, if the target has no beneficial effects, then it does more damage and it also has a chance to stun. We have the S2, which is on a charging system, so you can stock up two of these hits right here and it'll it strips a debuff which is really really good in pvp again because you could just you could just try to line it you could try to line it up and then try to ship as many targets as possible and like i said you can charge up to two shots and then s1 applies skill deceleration which is again really 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 good and it also applies crit rate up to herself so it's pretty it's a pretty good combination so you can pretty much just do s1 to you know apply the crit rate up and then you can start stripping and then once you're done stripping you can pretty much start applying uh the s3 which has a chance to stun so you know the synergy in this kit you know obviously you want to get the stun first or you want to get the crit rate up it's up to you most people just start stocking up the s2 so that way they can start shipping the target and then they start applying s1 then s3 so it's pretty much the order up to you but uh the, the main thing you want to do is you want to try to survive so that way you can start stripping as much as possible and this is the reason why it's mostly used in pvp because especially in the metal right now there's a lot of buffs and you want to ship all those buffs so if you line it up you know you line it up well you can ship multiple buffs and then open up your team so that way you can start doing some damage now you have as the dark staff dark staff is amazing it's probably orbia's best staff um arguably so you know there's a lot of arguments about this but honestly like i think dark staff is just overall really really good especially when the game launch it was the most scariest we have uh the s2 which applies vampire to herself and this is the reason why orbia is exceptionally good in galagos because for galagos orbia can literally do like up to two and a half floors by herself because of the fact that she can just apply this and then basically she has a vampire she has a vampire ability and she can literally uh keep it on all her skills so she can apply it and then switch to win and then she has a defense breaking brand to do more damage or she could just stay on on uh she could just stay on dark and just and go from there but it's really really good because again it applies it gives herself uh it gives, it gives herself a vampire where she could like heal from her abilities now and it also applies rest down and move speed down so that way she can kite them and stay pretty safe 
Her S3 applies poison and unrecoverable, which is really, really good in raids because of the fact that it's just like unrecoverable is nice because a lot of bosses have recoverable or have ways to recover and you don't want to deal with that. And then poison just adds another debuff so that way or again, or people that do damage based off debuffs can have more of that. And this is why when people are doing speed runs or raids, they usually do have a dark staff orbia because dark staff applies a lot of debuffs. So we have we have this which applies two, we have this which applies two, and we have her S one, which just gives her accuracy. It just gives her accuracy up so that way she can actually land her abilities. That's pretty much all it is. But these two apply for debuffs, which is really really good. So when you're doing raids um, or just any PVE content, obviously apply to get the vampire on yourself. Then start just going ham with her S three and then her S one, or you could do S one into S three so that way you can make sure you land your abilities. So that's overall just her her skills and her kit. And I would say overall she has an amazing amazing kit for pve and pvp and they all have their uses and this is why orbi is honestly in my opinion probably the best summoner in the game uh, not, i know a lot of people say think Saleta, and that's an arguable point but personally i think i think orbi is honestly the best in the game now we have the overall skill tree now a lot of people ask me like oh which level first which level first and i'm gonna be a keep it a buck with you this is the same for almost every single character and i'm not joking um the first thing you want to level up is her middle tree this tree right here you want to level this up the, the first thing you want to do for all summoners the reason why is because this pretty much unlocks like the the, the potential of your summoner so for the for most of this i'm not going go over i'm not going to go everything uh you know i'm not going to go over everything but i'm gonna just keep it simple the reason why it's so good is because it increases her damage and this is what you want for orbia because she's a damage dealer so her skills pretty her her passives pretty much allow her to defense break which is this skill right here but it mainly allows her to do more damage as long as she's above a certain health ratio so she does like you said like here skills have increased attack if your hp is is below a certain ratio so if you're low you do more damage and then you have accuracy up you have a crit damage up if you're above a certain ratio so if she's lower she gets more attack if she's higher she gets more crit damage so this is the reason why you want to make sure that you know you have her skills leveled up because this allows her to do more damage and she literally has a skill that just increases the damage dealt if the target is a boss again there's a reason why orbia is the best summoner for early game because all her skills just allow her to be very effective in pretty much every scenario if she's low does more damage if you're a boss does more damage if she's high does more damage she gets more mana all this is important um also it's really important that you level up her dashes and her evasions this is again for all summoners but the, it's really important for orbia because you want to stay as safe as possible because as long as you are safe you get that crit damage up so dodging is really really important and on top of that you know she's a mage so you, you want to avoid taking as much damage as possible so like i said you want to level up her passes first then you want to level up i say i always say do these first uh, these first one two three four five six six um, level up these these you can ignore for the most part because these in the beginning are more pvp oriented when you start doing pvp then you want to start leveling these this one okay these two my bad these two are more pvp this one in my opinion is like whatever because if your units ever die you could just you know you could just teleport back to a base and your units will revive and you're done so it's kind of like whatever to me uh, but for the most part uh Focus on these six, and then you can ignore these two for the most part, and then come back to it later. Uh, when it comes to the skills, I mean, it's still pretty self-explanatory. You level up the skill, you do more damage. Uh, but for the most part, you can ignore the autos because Orbia is not an auto uh, summoner. Her autos don't matter that much. I mean, it's extra damage, which is cool. But for the most part, it's not it's not the biggest of deals for her. Obviously, she's Orbia. She's a mage. She does everything with her skills. So obviously, level up her skills. Um, what I recommend is honestly keep it even at first. You know, try to try to even it out. Like you know. 111 222 333 but i will say you know obviously the priority should be born to her s2 because our s2 and all, all of her and all of her elements are really really good so i would 100 percent try to focus on the s2 because that's really really good for her because all her s2s are really really good when it comes to the elements uh this is the one thing you try to focus on last uh, and but again 
it's one of those things where you want to focus on one that you're primarily using for pve at first which is pretty much either uh, uh wind or dark and then as you can see i am doing fire and water lab because i don't really use these skills in pve um i'm pretty much always on wind or dark when it comes to pve nothing else and then light for pvp because light is probably one of the best if not the best for pvp um and then you can work on these two later on because they're probably her least used skills but they're still pretty important in pvp because sometimes you'll probably switch to them just so you can get the elemental advantage when you try to get a certain target so when it comes to orbia in her in her gear set you at the current moment it's pretty much as far as weapons and marble goes um i know a lot of people are using twist and marsh i personally will be making twist and marsh for all of them um the reason why is because the twist and marsh set is pretty good especially in pve uh, where i spent most of my time to be honest with you but um the effect is really good because not only do you do more damage in arena battlefield and siege battle with the twisted march set but also you get the set effect of increasing your ultimate gain when using soul linked skills so basically if the monster is soul linked to you and you're using their abilities you're increasing your ultimate gains even more which means you ultimate faster which is really good for orbit because obviously any character wants ultimate that's the reason why twisted march is pretty much like the go-to in my opinion the only other option is and it's probably just three of heroes but i personally think um twisted march is a lot better when it comes to when it comes to your accessories pretty much everybody at least that i know is still running crit damage neck with hp defense bracelet with hp defense ring the reason why is because especially in pvp um they're cutting your ass they <laughs> they going in on you buddy so you uh you want to make sure she's as tanky as possible so that way she can last and that way she can you know dish out her abilities um also when you start working on trying to plus 15 your weapons you get more than enough attack like i'm pretty sure when i'm done optimizing everything i'll be over eight thousand attack so you don't really need attack or defense uh um ring or bracelet in the beginning you might want to run one you might want to run one that was ooh, that was a mouthful um but uh, once you get to the later half once you get to the later half of the game it's just a lot better to run an hp or defense uh ring or bracelet so that way you can have the survivability because 1000 percent you'll be doing enough damage regardless um these are my orbia stats just so you can know but that's what pretty much everybody is running um also on the gear you're pretty much looking for crit rate crit damage so that way obviously you can crit and do more damage but um for the most part like i said on every weapon you're looking for try to look for crit rate crit damage hp defense attack is probably the fifth option and like i said you don't have to focus too much on attack because once you get to the later half of the game you're gonna get more than enough attack um and you'll probably get some here and there but focus more on hp defense so that way she can survive a little longer and that way in pvp if a cleave comes to hunt your ass you can actually survive <laughs> When it comes to monsters, you pretty much want to focus on things that obviously increase her ability, or you want a front line because Orbi is a damage dealer and you want her to stay in the back and you want pe you want pretty much people off her. You don't want people on her. So in the beginning, you want to focus on at least one tank. Um, Ariel is a good option. When I first started the game, it wasn't Ariel, it was Kodamiya. Kodamiya is really, really good as a, an original option, but getting Ariel is actually pretty good. Or you can also get an Ophelia. If you have Ophelia, Ophelia is great. You just want a knight that can sit in the front, take a bunch of damage, and keep them off Orbia. Um, but Provoker is really good, like Zhang Fei, also really good. Leona, I'm just kidding. I'm just complex. I'm sorry, but it's like those are really, really good options if you want. Um, you want to tank in the in the big in the front, so that way they can stay off. And Zhang Fei is really good. Ariel is really good because Ariel has high defense, or you build him high defense, so he just sits there and they can't do much to him. And he also cleanses and heals himself, so it makes it pretty pretty awesome um also you want things like a stripper because obviously with strippers they open up the target so that way orbit can do more damage and apply her debuffs and whatnot so obviously juno is really good um anybody that strips you know juno praha you know um, tiana all are pretty good strippers that you can use so that way you can open up your target so that way orbit can just do what she does then obviously you want people that do damage with her as well or oh, buffers as well like wahi wahi is really great but again you also want buffers buffers um 
are really great like Quahi, Bastet, um, you know, things that can uh, give her attack up so that way she's out here just popping up damage. Then obviously your standard damage dealer. But honestly, this is pretty much for like most summoners. Uh, in PvP, it's a little bit different, but this is not a really a PvP guy. It's just an overall Orbia guy where you're kind of just like, you know, um, doing PvE content with Orbia. You want to make sure that you at least have a tank to, you know, keep them off Orbia, a buffer, that can uh you know give allow orbia to do more damage i think while he's the best right now for orbia if you're trying to do pve content because she offers everything she's a damage dealer that um that applies attack up and defense breaks and also oppression is pretty dope so you can also use that for wahi and then you have obviously your argons your tesserions your your you know your magical archers um also um verta is a key for pretty much most summoners but really good for not only orbia but saletta as well because he allows you to ultimate a lot faster and and obviously you want to ultimate a lot faster and you want your cooldowns down that's the reason why verta house pretty good but for the most part um your teams are going to consist of like something like as far as just um it's gonna consist of things like a buffer a damage dealer oh perna's really good too how can i forget perna uh, a buffer a damage dealer and a tank so something like this will be pretty ideal um so that way again when you're you have everything you kind of need you have a tank that kind of tanks for you you have a a buffer and you also have a damage dealer and this will consist of pretty much a lot of your comps when you're doing most content so you kind of want to have that for the orbia so that way she's you can you can utilize her to the best of her potential and that is it that is the orbia guide um hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys uh getting a lot of info from this again you have any questions drop it in the comment section below i'll answer as many questions as possible uh the next guy will probably be saleta because i believe that was the second highest votes i got on the poll i did so if you guys want to vote in the polls that i do make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to check the community tab so that we can see every poll i do and how we can participate and get your voice heard but again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one. Peace out.